Hi and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I made my 8040s corset. So without further ado, let's get started with the mock-up before we move on to a more expensive fabric. You should start with a printing pattern from Nora War Corsets and Crinolines. I printed it in a smaller size since the original was way too big for me. Cut out the pattern and place it on your mock-up fabric. And don't forget to add seam allowances to every piece. I prefer to add them directly to the fabric. Now, cut all the pieces. My fabric is folded twice, so get two of every piece. Now we go to the sewing table. Join every panel together, including two front pieces. You can baste them if you need, but I just pin them. Well, now it's kinda resembles a corset. Now press all the seams open. You may need to use a dagger's hand. I made mine and you know it's like really easy to make. Now it looks even better. It's already starting to take some shape uh, even without boning. And speaking of which, let's move on to the boning channels. Made mine from satin ribbon one centimeter wide. Place it over each seam and sew it close to the edge. The next step is finishing back panels. I would recommend making two panels like these ones and sew it to your mock-up. Then, when you're done with it, you can just rip it off. I use flat steel boning for the center front and back and synthetic whalebone for other channels, but you can use spiral steel as well if you want. Slide it in the channels and then do the last part, lace your corset. Here I use the inverted bunny ear style. Okay, as you see, my first mock-up looks really bad. Like, really, really bad. It closes shut at the back and it makes me look... Wait, how do the Victorians call it? Yeah, like, I'm expecting. So I made it now without the seam allowances. Second one look much better. Still way too wide at the center front and not long enough at the top, but um, it can be helped. So I changed the pattern accordingly and made the third mock-up. I do think that you shouldn't start with your final corset until you're really happy with the mock-up. Well, I am and it's time to choose the fabric. I'm gonna use this satin fabric, which doesn't stretch at all, which is always a plus. I don't know how it's called. In the local shop it was labeled as taffeta. Cut all of the panels, then sew the center front seam. Now you should start working with the back panels. Make this additional panel that repeats the back panel shape. I've made mine about 3 cm wide. Finish the edge of this panel with a bias tape and sew the other edge to the back panel right sides together. Then turn it to the right side. You should get something like this. On the center back, sew three seams about one centimeter apart. We'll use the center one for the eyelets and the other two are the boning channels. Use an owl, owl to make holes for the grommets. Try not to read the fabric as you do it. Insert your grommets and set them. I'm using this tool, it's a really cheap one from China, but I really love how it looks. When your grommets are all set, it's time to move on to the front. I'm adding additional channels to the past area, and for that I'm using narrow herringbone tape. Finally, it's time to join all the panels together. Don't forget to press all the seam open after that. Now we're going to create boning channels with white herringbow tape. It's kind of hard to describe, but basically I'm doing stitching the ditch with herringbow tape underneath, trying to keep it centered. You can also baste it beforehand, it would make the process a lot easier. As you can see, the center of the tape is stitched to the seam. 
Next, you should make bonding channels by soon two seams on either side of the seam. In the end, it should look like that. As you can see, the other side looks nice and clean. The next step would be cutting a couple of tapes to finish the top and the bottom of the corset. I cut them on a straight grain because I didn't have enough fabric to cut them in a bias. Sew one of them right sides together to the bottom of the corset and then finish it by hand on the other side. I usually use small whip stitches for this. It's time to work on the bus cores. Cut them open, then fold and paste the raw edges. Then cut the bony. You can use some from your mock-up, but you need twice as much, since every seam has to bounce down. This is how I prepare my synthetic whalebone. I cut the sharp edges and then melt it a bit with a candle. Insert each bone into its channel and it's time for first real feeding. Looks quite nice, but seems like something is missing. Oh yeah, the bus cars. Let's make them together. Put some fabric where the gauze should be. Pin into the corset and please try not to stop yourself. Like, please, don't do that. Then trace the contour of the gauze, give it a good press and transfer it to the paper. You can change the shape a bit if you want. Here you can also see the original go which I didn't use. Cut the gauze from your fabric, fold the raw edges to the right side and paste them. Baste the gauze to the corset and sew them in place. And don't rush while doing that. Sew another tape to the top of a corset and then again finish it by hand on the other side. The corset is almost done, but here is a couple of things you can add. Embroidery on the bottom of a gauze and petticoat hook to keep your skirts from bulking at the waist. And now it's time for a grand reveal. I love the shapes it's giving me. And feels so comfortable, despite the fact that it cinches me to 54 cm. It's not the best result that I've ever had, but it's up there. Now it's time for me to move on to my next 8040 Sunday garments, and I hope that this video was at least a little helpful to you. Please leave your questions in the comment section, I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Have a nice day, and I'll see you when I see you.